Hey guys, it's Alex here from AlexFigures.com and today I am reviewing the Mito Red Light Mito Pro 1500. Now, if you have subscribed to my channel, you may have already seen my first impressions and unboxing video of this panel. But in this video, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a deep, deep dive and we're gonna test it. I've got an assortment of meters and, and little devices. We're gonna test everything from power irradiance to um, wavelengths to EMF. Uh, we're gonna do some crunch some numbers and look at price and value across power, wattage, output, and um, how many LEDs it have. Of course, we're gonna talk about the device itself. Uh, I'm gonna share my experiences using it over the last few weeks. And uh, we're gonna compare it to some other panels, not only in the Mito Red Light product range, but also some rival products, you know, from other companies to help you. Um, yeah, pretty much, you know, what I wanna do with this video is to help you make an informed decision whether you should buy this panel or a different one from Mito Red or, you know, go elsewhere with your money. First things first, what do you need to know about Mito Red Light and this particular panel. Well, Mito Red Light are an American-based company. Uh, they were set up a few years ago now, and to be honest, they caused quite a stir when they entered the market because they came in with um, some really high-powered and great value, like low-cost panels. And they, the panels weren't like revolutionary in the sense that they had all this new technology or anything like that. No, they, they just did the basics very, very well. Uh, great design, easy to use, great EMF or like no EMF levels or anything like that. Um, good support, good shipping rates, just every, across the board really, really well. And in fact, the original series, the Mito Red Light Max panel, placed second overall in my 2019 body panel comparison uh, video, and second to the Platinum LED Biomax. So, you know, and this was a relatively new company and a new product, right? And in fact, some people, uh, especially competitors, um, you know, use that as a counter argument as to why you should stay away from this company because they are so new. But fast forward two, three years and hey, look, they're still around. They're still doing very, very good. And um, their websites, they got a great website. They got a great support page. Um, I hear great testimonials from, from viewers and readers that are buying their panels and their panels work. I mean, I've been using this for a few weeks. I've, I've used the previous one, the first gen product for a month or two or even longer actually and yeah I get really good results from it so that is all good now what did Bino Red Light do well after they had their original um, series they realized that yeah there were a few features that they needed to include in their panels and they introduced two new lines they introduced their Mito Mod range and their Mito Pro range this is the Mito Pro Mito Pro 1500 the Mito Mod which is now their I guess their middle of the uh, pack product range that incorporated a few new features such as um, the ability to uh, connect multiple panels you know on top or side by side hence the name mod for modular and you could also use the stand I think also their internals were improved uh, more power and all that other good stuff the Mito Pro the top of the range product line went a step beyond that yes you have the same modular capabilities but you also have an inbuilt LCD control panel and a built timer and also the Mito Pro range have a much bigger panel so the 1500 that I have here actually has 300 LEDs whereas the biggest Mito mod panel is been below 200 I think it's 180 LEDs also head over to alexfergus.com and jump on my email list because what I'm doing is I'm building a red light therapy buyers guide and what I'm doing is I'm taking all the data from these reviews and all the data from my experiments and I'm gonna uh, package up a uh, like a comprehensive um, guide to help you find the best red light panel uh, or device for your needs and, and you'll be able to compare everything like cost per LED, wavelengths, um, EMF output, cable length, price, all of that in one um, one page, one one uh, one blog article. So they'll be over at alexvegas.com. Okay, so how much does this Mito Pro 1500 cost? Well, it retails for 1,149 US dollars. Now, the guys at Mito Red have shared a discount code that you guys can use, and that code is Alex A L E X. If you enter that in when buying one of these panels or any of the panels on their site, for um for that matter, you will save five percent. So that brings the price down. 
for this panel, 1,092 US dollars. So that's, that's a good price. Shipping rates, if you're in America, you have free shipping, which is awesome. If you're out of America, you, you're looking at spending about 100 to 130 dollars. I think it's about 125 dollars to Australia, about 120 dollars to the UK. So that is on the higher side. Uh, those shipping rates, you know, I, I know some other companies, their shipping rate, international shipping rates are a lot lower than that. So that is a bit of a bummer. But if you're in America, that free shipping is a great advantage. All right, let's move on to the look and feel category. So, the Mitre Red box comes in a nicely packaged box. You, you know straight away that it's a Mitre Red panel. Uh, the internal box where the panel is sitting in is a nice white gloss box, which I... I haven't seen a box like this before and you do have lots of labels and um, branding on it. Always a good thing. When you open up that box, it's pretty standard. You've got your phone packaging, you see the panel there and then underneath you have all your accessories and manual. Now I class this as a body panel, but it's only just. So technically my classification for a body panel is I think 150 LEDs up to 300 LEDs. So this unit does have 300 LEDs. So it's top of the range for the body panel. Um, above body panel, then I, I'd go into my mega panel category where, you know, some of these panels have over a thousand LEDs. Size-wise, it is 42 inches tall, which is just over a meter. Uh, 10 inches across at the front there, which is about 25 centimeters, and 3 inches thick. You can see on the side we have the rubber feet. Uh, on the back we have one, two, three, four, five fans, and we have the main power switch, the main power plugs, and the input and outputs for um, the modular capability. All pretty standard stuff. I do like though that the power points, you know, I was going to say they're in the middle, but they're not quite, they're probably just above middle, but they are lower. Some other panels have it up high. That's a bummer. I prefer them down low because your power points are, are low on the floor, right? So if you're hanging this up high or leaning against the wall, you've got to run that cable down to your power point. Uh, and of course, if the power plugs are up really high here, you know, you don't have much length in the cable that comes with the panel. And you've got to run lots of extension cords. So that is a bit of a bummer. To be honest, on the side, there's nothing totally unique. It's just standard uh, air vents here, no, no branded etching. Um, and then you've got the Mito Red Light label uh, and colors on the side there. On the other side we have the control panel which is rather basic but it does what it needs to do and on the front you wear the LEDs and it's all encased in a white um, metal package. Weight wise we're at 25 pounds which is 11 kilos. Um, you know that's about typical. It is weighty but this is quite a large unit. Unfortunately, there are no handholds or grips, which is a bit of a bummer. Um, we're seeing this coming out in, in more of these new generation panels, and um, it is a nice little add-on. I'm sure we'll, all companies will catch up to this, and you know maybe the next generation Mito Red Lights will have those grips, uh, because they are useful. It is only available in white. The Mito Mod range, the, the range down from the Mito Pro, comes in black, um, and the original Mito Red Light, the base range, it comes in like a white with a clear perspex um, front covering. So you got three different designs. I think the white is fine. You know, it's nothing like wow, that's totally unique or amazing. But hey, it doesn't look bad. Um, so yeah, no real issues there. Okay, so what do you get with your purchase? Uh, it's all the standard accessories. You get a pulley, some eye goggles, pretty standard. Uh, you get the steel wire screws that go on the top and a little clip. Uh, you get your narrow door hook that doesn't work here. Um, you get extra cables if you're getting multiple units so you can connect them all and control them from the one panel. And um, you get your power cable. Now this power cable is 1.8 meters long which is I think 6 feet. Um, it didn't come with a New Zealand plug but I'm not going to hold that against my no red light because often when I get these panels uh, that have been sent um, direct from the warehouse or from, you know, depending on stock levels and that. Uh, sometimes I get sent review units. Uh, so I was provided this panel from, from Mito Red Light, for instance. Um, so it may be a different experience, I guess, than what the regular consumer gets. And I, I'm pretty sure they send you a local plug. Um, so I won't hold that against them. Against them. So at the moment, obviously, I have my adapter on here for this plug. Uh, you also get the Mito Red Light manual, which is, you know, it's pretty good. Uh, to be honest, most of the content is just pulled straight from the website, but it is like a nice glossy large manual and um, 
you know, I think it is important that these manuals are included rather than just a link to a website or like a really, you know, a simple one page um, manual that some people, some companies have because you are spending, you know, a thousand bucks on these panels and if you haven't used them before, it is nice to know like how to set them up and, and how to connect them together if you've ordered two or three of them and also a bit about red light therapy and, um, you know, how it works. So, yeah, good manual. What about other add-ons? Well, the only other thing you can get for these panels is the stand. Now, uh, Mito Red Light just have one stand and that is their um, vertical stand. They don't offer a horizontal stand at this point. Their vertical stand is $299 and it's quite a solid um, stand. I think it weighs something like 50 pounds and that will hold um, two to four panels. So you can get two of these side by side, two stacked on top and you've got an epic wall panel. It does look like a good stand. I haven't tested the stands. In fact, I don't have much experience testing stands. I get a lot of questions asking about them. So I may have to get into that and start getting some of these stands and you know, see how it is setting them up and moving them around and that. So yeah, be sure to subscribe. I will do that later in the year. I'll, I'll get into reviewing some of these stands and comparing them. What about warranty and support? So with this particular panel, you're getting a three year warranty, which is good. Uh, the norm used to be one or two years. Now it's been pushed up to three. I think the best in the market is five, which is quite amazing. But three years is, is a good warranty period. I don't know if that's for all of the Mito Red panels though. I, I think their base uh, line is still only two years, but you'd have to check on the website. Mito Red also offer a 60 day no questions asked return policy and that has no restocking fee. So pretty much if you get this, you use it for 50 days or whatever and you think, hey, it just it doesn't do anything for me or I, I'm not impressed with it or whatever, you can um, send it back. Of course, you'll have to pay the shipping costs, so that is a bit of a financial hit, I guess, but uh, you're not going to be hit with a restocking fee. So, okay, now for the fun part of the review, testing wavelength, testing power, testing performance. So. Like I've touched on uh, already, 300 LEDs, 305 watt LEDs in this panel. Uh, they are single, di single diode LEDs with a 60 degree beam angle. Uh, so on the beam angle front, we've seen everything from 30 degree beam ang angles right through to 90. Um, I personally think around the 30 to 60 is best and I think 90 is just too wide. Uh, so that's good to see. This particular panel has four wavelengths. Now, it has two red light wavelengths and two near infrared wavelengths. And those wavelengths are 630 and 660 in your red light and 830 and 850 in your near infrared light. Now what's interesting here is Mito Red have split the power evenly between all four wavelengths. So 25% of the power is going to 630, 25% 660, etc. Now if you look at the Platinum LED Biomax for instance, they have five wavelengths, right? but 80% of the power is still going to 660 and 850. So you're only getting 20% of power going to those three other wavelengths. Um, and you know, there's pros and cons of that. Uh, the pros are that, hey, we know 660 and 850 are the most researched and there's good therapeutic use to them. So, you know, you want to get that. Uh, you want to get the, 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 the benefits of those lights, right? Um, and where, whereas those other wavelengths, still kind of new and we're still learning about them so you don't necessarily want all the power going there in case we find out they're not that good though i don't believe that to be the case but yeah the downside of course is um you know like you may think oh you're getting all this power at 810 but it might only be a few percentage points of the overall panel so that is kind of yeah, and that's the biomax i'm talking about whereas the the minor red what they've done is yeah they've spread it evenly so you know okay you're getting an even blend of of all these wavelengths so you know that's, that's quite neat um and i know another panel like light path led i've re reviewed that i'll put a link to that below you can check that out uh you know the manufacturer there oh the developer there has gone um another step and what he's done is tried to create a custom blend to suit you know, to get the best benefits for you so for instance with the light path led the top third of the lights have a lot of uh 18 nanometer leds because that's most beneficial to the brain so the idea is you know that's the part that's going to be on the brain and you know so there's interesting things like that anyway minor red four out four wavelengths 25 split between them all now what i'm going to do i actually have a data chart here from uh minor red that shows the breakdown in the wavelengths so you can see the four peaks there and over the end here the the uh near infrared is, is quite um you know the peaks aren't as separate as say the red light so what i'm going to do is i'm going to use my spectrometer and i'm going to test to see what wavelengths this is picking up and um yeah if minor reds claims are correct 
So, let's do that first. We'll test the red light first, then the infrared. After we've done that, we're going to use the same device to test power levels and irradiance. And that's, that's the really fun part, and I know a lot of people are excited by that. Alright, so I've just tested uh, the red light only. I've left the infrared off. Now, I took a few readings because, obviously, in the panel, um, you know, one LED has to be your 630, the other one 660. So, if you go right over a 630, you're going to get a higher concentration of 630 and less of 660 for instance. So anyway, this was a pretty good representation. But what I found is, yes, you're getting that one peak over here. You know, so we're about 665, okay? So remember, it's meant to be 660 and 630. Um, so we're getting a peak at 665. Still though, like, you're still getting a ton of light coming in at 660, which is down here. So you're still getting a heap of light there, but the peak is more around that 6. 6.5 number but what's interesting though the other wavelength is meant to be 6.30 at least that's what they say on the website but I'm getting 6.45 um and that's quite far off and I just tested this multiple times because I was thinking you know is that a bad bad reading but um no matter where I went on the panel it was around that 6.45 6, 6.30 is way down here right so you're only getting you know, I'm not too sure what's going on there. I mean, that's a, quite a big difference. The 665 versus 660, yeah, that's okay. A couple of wavelengths, a couple of points there, and you're still getting a ton of light in the 660. But the difference between 630 and 645 is massive. And there's obviously a peak coming in at 645. And again, I tested that in, in various um, different areas. So it is interesting. Remember when you have the printout from Mito Red here, uh, they're saying, you know, the 630 and 660. So it's a similar graph, I mean, in terms of what we see there, what we see over here. Um, it's just the wavelengths are out. Now, of course, my device is only worth a few thousand dollars. Um, obviously, the companies making this have all the fancy technology that's probably worth 10 times that. Um, so it could be my device, but to date, it's been pretty bang on with, with what panels say. I mean, here and there, there's a wavelength that's out. So... My suspicion is that the Mitre Red is actually putting out more of a 6, 640 and a 660 um, compared to 660 and 630. So that's interesting. And I mean, the reason I test this is if you are looking, you know, maybe you've found some research showing that 630 is really beneficial for a certain disorder, disorder that you have and hence you want to buy this panel. And then you see this and you're like, well, actually I'm not really getting much 630. That's why I test this, all right? So anyway, let's test the near infrared and see how that stacks up. Firstly, you look at the shape of the graph and you compare it to the mitre red graph. And um, yeah, I mean, it's pretty much bang on. Now, let's have a look. So remember, mitre red say this panel emits 830 and 850. So let's see where we're at. Uh, so over here we have, you're looking at this number up here, eight, uh, I'd say the peak's at about 851, 852, so that's good. And again, that shows that, hey, yeah, my, my device is should be accurate because that's what we expect. And then if we come over here, this should be about 830, 836, 830, yeah, 836. So again, it's only a couple points out. I expect a bit of a... Um, differentiation between the exact number and what it's been out, outputted as long as the energy level is still quite high so if we go down to 830 which is yeah so you're still getting a ton of irradiance at 830 even though the peak is about 836 um, and that's the thing with the LED like lasers will just be straight up and straight down um, so yeah what's interesting here is so the peaks that I'm testing for the near infrared are, what was it, 835 and 852. So not too bad compared to the, the marketed claims. But for the near infrared, oh sorry, for the red light, yeah, there's definitely a discrepancy at that 630 mark. You're getting more at 645. So it'd be interesting if um, Mitre Red are watching this. Maybe they can leave their comments or thoughts below. Otherwise, I'll, I'll reach out to them as well and try to get um, some information as to what's going on. Hey, so it's been about a week since I tested the Mitre Red panel and I did reach out to the guys at Mitre Red regarding the 630 nanometer wavelength discrepancy that, that uh, we, we, we discovered in my test here. And um, they were quite surprised because all their independent test results that they had when they first designed this panel and uh, all their own testing that they've done in-house had shown that, yeah, the, the wavelength peak was around that 630 nanometer mark, hence why they were um, marketing it as having 630 and the 660 nanometer wavelengths. Um, so, yeah, they were quite surprised and they did the, some 
research into it and it turns out that there was a few changes at the manufacturing company and um, there was a period there where yeah unfortunately the LED wavelengths weren't quite as claimed and that's obviously one of the panels that I have here so might already have said straight away they've, they've um, got onto this and they are you know they've resolved the issue and panels going forward will be back to what they should be with that peak at 630 nanometer wavelength and they've also said they've brought in some quality control standards to cont continuously uh, check that you know the panels are putting out the numbers that they are meant to be putting out. All right cool so I'm going to test irradiance now and there's a few metrics I do test here. Peak power at 6 inches for near infrared and red light we do a combined power combined power and we do a total power um, total estimated wattage output now I've explained how I test these and why I test them in all the other reviews and uh, you know it typically takes me a couple of minutes and then all the testing I've always filmed it all and some of these reviews are getting quite long so going forward what I'm going to do is just do all the testing um, and then come back to you with all the numbers all right and if you want to if you want a full explanation of what I'm doing and why, uh, just ask a question, I'll, I'll, I'll answer it in the comments below, or go back and watch one of the other four reviews, because I explain it all in there. Alright, the numbers are in. Now, while I was taking those measurements, what I thought I'd do is, is a separate video explaining my testing protocol, not only for the power radiance, but for EMF and everything um, and then I'll just refer to that going forward so be sure to subscribe because I'll film that later today and uh, hopefully get that up soon as well so if you do want to know exactly how I'm testing this um, be sure to stick around for that but anyway the numbers are in now I'm going to run through all these numbers and I'll provide a little bit of context and comparison as I go through them uh, but what I will be doing like I mentioned at the start of, this, start of this video I'll be doing a red light therapy buyers guide over at alexfigures.com and I'll be putting all this data from every panel I test and you'll be able to go in and just compare exactly uh, you know how your juve compares to this or how you know the light path LED compares to a Biomax whatever you'll be able to compare it all and see it in one nice table so be sure to um, jump on the email to be notified of when that's live all right so numbers so first things first peak power at six, six inches in the center was 88.2 uh, milliwatts centimeter squared which is which is up there it's not the highest powered panel that I've tested to date um, but it was it was up there uh, red light peak was 47 near infrared peak was 44 so those numbers you know are a little bit behind light path LED who we also have 5 watt LEDs, so those numbers are, you know, they're, they're very high numbers, but they aren't the best. For instance, um, the light path LED panel, which had 5 watt LEDs as well, they're around the 48 and, and 50, so, you know, very similar, but still higher than the minor red. So that is, you know, surprising. Uh, I wouldn't say disappointing, but because um, they are still good numbers, but a little bit surprising. All right, now the total power output, which is 9 uh, the average of nine readings across the panel and then based on the size we get a wattage figure was 136 watts which is um which is really good i think that's that's one of the highest of course the bigger the panel the higher that should be but what's useful is um we take this figure later on and we do a value calculation but 136 now what's interesting is the light bath led panel the large panel they have 255 leds but their leds are also five watt because most panels are only three watt leds right the light path LED is also 5 watt. Now their total um, total power output was 120. So you're getting more power from the Mito Red panel compared to the uh, light path panel. But of course you're getting 40 odd more LEDs. But where this is going to be interesting is when we do the calculations in the value section after this. Uh, which we'll do very very soon. So be sure to stick around for that. And the other figure I have here is the average combined combined power over nine spots and that was 76 milliwatts all right before we go into the value round i got two more little tests one is the water straw so i'll do that real quick and then secondly uh, we're going to look at the hot spot here i have the panel six inches from the wall and what i'm going to do now is fire it up and we're going to see what the pattern looks like on the wall all, all going well if it's a well designed unit we should see a nice red blend uh, with only the drop off of red light towards the end no concentrations in the middle let's turn it on and see Yeah, and we do. It's exactly what we see. Uh, in fact, it's quite hard to identify any. So oh, there, there are some very subtle rings coming around here. Remember, though, there's two 
there's two red light LEDs in this, not just the one. So that you are going to see a little bit of a difference between um, the intersection of the two red lights. But that's good. I mean, overall, you see that there is a nice drop off. This is six inches out, remember? So you're seeing, you know, the concentration of light, which is effectively right in front of the panel here, a couple inches out. You're seeing a bit of light and then it drops right off. But the main thing is you're not seeing massive peaks or that polka dot effect that we have seen in some other panels. A good result there from the mitre red panel. As we go further back, I'm just trying to see. With my eye, I can see very, very small sort of rings. I mean, it's, 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 it's good. It's really good. I'm just, I can see some very minor ones. But again, it's probably the different LEDs. But uh, I wouldn't be worried about that. I have seen some shocking... Uh, examples where you see real concentrated light so as for the wattage draw figures uh, we have the red light pulling 390 watts the near infrared 425 and the total wattage draw when both lights are going at 806 again i'll be putting all of this over at alexfigures.com for you to check out all right so i think that's everything for the power and performance round uh overall we know we're getting good a good blend of light which is great um we're getting Four wavelengths as claimed, however the 630 is more around the 640, 645, everything else is pretty much lined up though. Power irradiance levels are very high, yes very very high, it's just that some other new panels are, are better now than, than what I was testing here, but still they're really good numbers. And there's no big discrepancies between near infrared and the red light, we're getting a nice even blend between red and near infrared. So, that is all good. What, what we're going to do now is we're going to look at value, we're going to look at the value round. Now there's two calculations I do. The first one is a simple uh, dollar per LED. Now I use the discounted price, so again that's the price you'd be paying if you use discount code Alex, A-L-E-X, it'll save you 5%. So the, the figure that I come up with is $3.64. So effectively what, what that means is one LED in this panel costs you $3.64. Now that's the lowest figure I've seen out of I think four panels now I've tested, four big name panels. So that's very good and that's why I said when Mitre Red Light came into the scene a few years ago, they really... um. You know they disrupted the the space quite a bit because they had not only a good powered unit um but the price the price point was amazing so three dollars 64 that's the lowest i've seen again this will all be over at um alexfigures.com so you can compare all the numbers over here but the main figure this is the real good figure that i like seeing is the discounted dollar per wattage output figure all right so that was the wattage calculated wattage output for the whole panel and then we uh divide that by the um price now this came out to be eight dollars and two cents which again is the lowest we've seen so what that means is for eight dollars you're getting one watt of red and the infrared light so effectively it's it's how um how much bang for your buck are you getting now that's it's low i mean the other panels that we have tested uh are close to that figure you know in the eight dollar mark nine dollar mark so it's not like it's worlds apart but it is still the lowest so it is worth mentioning um which is, yeah, I mean, it's, it's interesting, interesting because, sure, it didn't have the highest power radiance that we've seen, uh, that I've tested to date, but it's still got really good numbers. But just because of that low price, price point, it still comes out really good in the value round. So, hey, that's all good. One other thing I should mention, I will be testing the most popular body panels. Uh, I'll be doing a big side-by-side -side comparison test soon, very soon, hopefully. I'm um, just waiting for the new Biomax panels to be released. Once I have done that, um, I'll be comparing all of these in one big video series. So be sure to subscribe to that because I know as you're watching this, you're thinking, you know, what are these numbers? It's hard to compare them all. Well, what I'll be doing is, is comparing all these um, features and, and metrics that I'm testing today and having it all uh, in one big video. So you, you'll be able to sit there and watch and, and figure out exactly what you want and which one you want to go for. Okay, so I just did the magnetic test using my Electro Smog Cornet meter here, um, and that was at a six inch reading. Now we, the numbers were pretty much rock bottom. All right, as you can see here, you want to see that little graph down the side here, and that shows shows you um, the peaks. Now all those figures are really, really low. Uh, in fact, the highest figure I saw was 0.1 micro Teslas, but it was sitting around 0 0.08. And that was all in the green, which is what we want. So that's really good. There's no mag, uh, microwave reading because there's no EMF, um, sorry, there's no Bluetooth or Wi-Fi in this. So we're going to test electric, uh, the electric readings next. And again, that was rock bottom. Stayed in the green. In fact, there was, wasn't even any movement when I turned it on and off. 
Uh, so perfectly happy with that. It was about 9 uh, V over M volts per meter, I think that is. Anyway, it was rock bottom on here, so I'm, I'm happy with that. So from an EMF point of view, there's absolutely nothing to worry about with this mitre panel. What we're going to do now is test the sound. From a sound point of view, we got to 51.7 as a max. So, yeah, not too bad there as well. Now, there's no pulsing in this panel. Some panels do utilize uh, pulsing technology. That's not the case with Mito, uh, the Mito Red Mito Pro. Um, but these panels are also certified uh, FDA medical class 2 certification um, so that is good to know so overall from a safety point of view yeah nothing really to worry about here like I said these panels have been or well, this company has been around for a few years got a great support team as well and have some really good customer reviews and testimonials so I think it's all good on that front okay so now what we're going to do is test the flicker rate of the Mito Pro 1500 now previously in the, the original series of the Mito Red range um, the flicker wasn't great. Uh, the Mito Max that I tested in the 2019 comparison series had a flicker rate of 100 hertz and a flicker percent of 71%. So those are the two metrics I'm going to be testing here with my spectrometer. Now, flicker, I, I do have an article on flicker, um, so I will link to that if you want to know more about flicker. I don't want to get too into too much detail in, in this video, I just want to get the reading. But pretty much we're looking at flicker rate, which is how many times in a second that the LEDs are um, changing their brightness, and then flicker percent, which shows the level of brightness change. So 100% flicker percent would be the total on and off. Uh, a 50% flicker percent would be half the brightness is lost. And then the, the frequency, the hertz, the fl flicker rate, is how many times in a second that's happening. So ideally, ideal situation, no flicker would be 0% on both metrics. Um, but it's in the 2019 series, I think only one panel had no flicker and that was the red light rising full stack. So um, it'll be interesting to see what these new generation panels are coming out with. I believe this is meant to be pretty good on the flicker front. So um, let's get into it. Well, I can tell you now that Mito Red have done something because this is perfect. There is absolutely no flicker whatsoever. So both metrics, 0% on the flicker frequency and 0% on the flick, flicker percent. So uh, perfect world on Mito Red. So if you're looking for a panel that has no flicker, then hey, you definitely have to consider the Mito Mod. Okay, now we look at operation. How easy is it to set up and how easy it, is it to use? To be honest, setting it up is super, super simple. All you have there's one power cable, it goes in the back, you turn the power light on, you hit OK, and away you go. It is um, yeah, pretty much foolproof. There's no fancy menus or fancy cables, and you can't really stuff it up, because there's only one plug for the, um, for the cable to go in. So that is all very good. If you are going to use the pulley system or the door hook, you simply screw these hooks into the top. It's all in the manual, and again, you can't really stuff it up, and you just hook these on the hooks or your wall mounts. Or you just rest it against the wall like I'm doing at the moment. So, all simple stuff. As for the menus and uh, the timer function, let's come over here and I'll show you how that works. Now, anyone that has used a red light therapy panel that has a control panel like this, or you've watched other videos of mine, this you'll be quite familiar with this setup. It's, it's um, rather common, rather straightforward. So, all I've done now is I've plugged it in at the back, turned the main power on, and what happens is the screen comes on. It defaults to 10 minutes. Uh, now, if I simply press OK, it'll start running for 10 minutes and count down. At the end of 10 minutes, that timer obviously goes to zero and the whole thing stops. Now, um, I've got a few issues with this, but we'll, we'll finish uh, explaining how the control panel works and then I'll cover those issues. Now, if you want to change the time, you simply press the time button and you can go all the way up to 20 minutes. And then you hit OK and away you go. The mode button changes between Red light and the infrared light. Okay, now when I first, if you watched my unboxing video, I was quite confused. I was like, "Why? What's A1?" I just thought maybe it was like they hadn't programmed it properly, and yeah. But it turns out the A is meant to be an R for red, and the one is not a one; it's an I for infrared. Um, so what you do is you press mode, and that will enable red light only, or mode again for infrared only, or both of them for both of them to go. So let's say I want both and I want 15 minutes, I then press OK, and away I go. What will happen though, is you'll see this little LED down here lights up for the infrared. 
If that's not light, lit up, then you've got no infrared running. Um, so for instance, if I just enable red and hit OK, you'll see the red lights are glowing, but this little LED here is going, isn't going. Because you can't see the near infrared lights, right? So that's why you need some visual aid to know what, if it's running or not. But this is where the, the issue comes in with this panel. It's my, probably the only issue I have in terms of operating this panel. If I've switched it off at the mains, okay, so you've seen the screen go off. I'm gonna turn it on at the mains now, right? It defaults to 10 minutes. If I just want to hit start or go and just get into it, hit OK, away I go. But you'll notice that by default, the infrared light isn't going. That means by default, only red light is enabled. I, personally, I think that's just a bit silly. Like, why not enable both by default? And it's caught me out a few times where, um, you know, you just you go into the room, you turn your panel on, uh, you hit OK, and away you go. And then after a few minutes, I'm like, oh, that's right, I've got to enable near infrared because you can't see it. Uh, again, if you read the manual or you use this for a few sessions, you soon figure out, okay, well, this is what's going on. But yeah, the only downside with all of this is that's not enabled by default. Otherwise, it's a very straightforward, simple to use uh, control panel. If you do have any other questions about using it or just the device in general or the panel in general, just leave them below and I'll do my best to answer it. I did mention I have been using this for a few weeks now. I always uh, use the, these panels for at least, you know, half a dozen or, or try to get 10 sessions out of them before I do these reviews, just so I can pick up on little things like that. Um, as for my feedback after using this panel, I do like the size of it. It is a little bit taller uh, than your typical body panel. I know there are 300 LEDs in it, but you are getting a little bit more height than some other panels. Not much, but it is, it is noticeable, and you still have that good width as well. So that is good, just knowing you've got a bigger coverage area. I, I tend to prefer the simpler controls. You can just get in and turn it on and away you go. Um, so I do like that aspect of it. Again though, that little uh, default setting not being enabled is, I don't know, I, I just think that's a bit of an overthought, but maybe they'll improve that for future ones. Um, and you do feel a good warmth coming from this panel and I know that's not necessarily what you want you know you, if there's a lot of heat you know there's a lot of lost uh, lost energy but you know it is you do feel good after using these panels um and I've noticed uh you know like all the good things that I experienced from red light therapy like my tooth pain which I've just got I've got some high gums high gums on on my teeth so I get real sensitive pain there you know if, if I stop using red light therapy uh, for a week, th that pain will come back. Um, I've been using this on and off the last few days, and yeah, like I can have ice water in my mouth, and I don't feel a thing. So I know, I know it's all working. Um, otherwise, though, it's it's really hard to comment because I have been using red light therapy on and off for years now. So it's not like I use this and there's a new feature and it's absolutely changed my life or world. But the good thing is we've got a good power out point, uh, power output. We've got a good size, and we've got a good nice blend of light. Okay, so now that you know a lot about this Mito Pro 1500, how it performs, uh, what the power levels are like, how safe it is, how does it compare against the other Mito Red Light panels um, that the company provides? So, like I mentioned at the start of this video, Mito Red Light offer three product, product lines. Their base slash original Mito, uh, Mito Original range, uh, then their mid-tier Mito Mod range, and then the top, Mito Pro. Within each range, you've then got various sizes. So you've got the large one like I have here, you've got smaller ones all the way down to, in fact, I've even got a handheld battery panel, which I tested in my handheld comparison video. I'll put a link to that below. If we look at similar size panels, in the Mito Mod range, which is, again, their mid-tier range, you have the Mito, Rod, Mito Mod 900. Now, this is actually the biggest panel in the Mito Mod range, but it's a lot smaller than this 300 LED Mito Pro 1500. Now, the biggest Mito Mod panel is the Mito Mod 900. It only has 100 and, uh, 180 LEDs. They are 5 watt LEDs, the same as this. So you would expect similar peak power figures, uh, but obviously a lower total wattage output because of the smaller design. Um, it is $400 cheaper, but you do miss out on a few key features, such as the control panel, the timer, and you also get a shorter warranty. I think it's a two-year warranty versus the three-year in this. So for a $400 saving, you're getting not quite half the size, and you're missing out a few bells and whistles. It is hard to justify uh, going with the Mito Mod 900 when, again, you spend a few hundred dollars more, you get nearly double the size and the advanced features plus the extra warranty. So, to be honest, I wouldn't really look, uh, recommend the Mito Mod 900. Instead, I'd recommend the Mito Pro 1500 over that. Otherwise, you can look at the base product line. Now, a lot of people think, all right, 
if it's a base product it's no good but that's not not the case you see the largest panel in the base range is the Mito Red Mito Mega. I know there's a lot of Mitos in this, but it's the Mito Mega. Now that also has 300 LEDs and I believe that 5 watt LEDs as well. I'm not too sure if it's the same technology and internal drivers as this, but I'd say the power readings are going to be good because remember the original series was what tested as the highest powered panel for 2019 in my test. So what's the comparison between this and the base level 300 LED panel? The, the Mito Omega. Well, there's a couple of things that are different. Firstly, the looks, they look completely different. Secondly, the base one doesn't have the control panel or timer like the Pro. Um, thirdly, and this is probably the biggest difference, the base Mito Omega panel only has two wavelengths, your 660 and your 850. Whereas, remember the Mito Pro range have four wavelengths and the power is split evenly between them. So if you are looking at maximizing the health benefits from a red light therapy panel and tapping into those other wavelengths, then yeah, you're gonna lean more towards the Mito Pro. Now when it comes to price, you would expect the price for the Mito Mega, the base panel, the original series, to be a lot cheaper. Turns out it's actually not that much cheaper. I think you're only saving about $100 or thereabouts. Given that it's only a you know, maybe a 10, 15% price difference, it's kind of hard to justify saving that money and getting a panel that has a shorter warranty, only has two wavelengths, doesn't have a timer or control panel, uh, and also that base model, you can't use a stand, so you, you don't have the modular capability where you can attach two or three or four together, and you can't use it on a stand. So really, if you're looking at the Mito Red Light range, um, it's hard to go past the Mito Pro range and then also the Mito Pro 1500. I mean, just from a value point of view, from the features, it's it's exceptionally valued. I mean, you could you could argue that Mito Red should have priced this higher to make those other products look more competitive, um, you know, within the, the Mito Red ecosystem. But when you do crunch the numbers and, and take a serious good look at them and weigh up the pros and cons, any rational person should probably end up going with a Mito Pro panel um, just because yeah you get better value you get a few more features and you get the better warranty plus you can add on more with the modular capability and you got the built-in timer and all that so overall uh, I think this is probably the standout panel in the Mito Red range what about the competitors products let's have a look how the Mito Pro compares to uh, the main competitors on the market so maybe the biggest rival that Mito Red have is Platinum LED now Platinum LED have their Biomax range right and it's quite funny how <laughs> how similar these two companies are, or similar these two panels are, I should say. Because there is a, a lot of overlap, and I often see a bit of confusion coming through in the comments and questions and emails. Now, why is it... Now, that's not the only reason why this rivalry is so strong. Uh, in my 2019 body panel comparison, I mentioned that the original Mito uh, Red panel placed second, and first place was the Biomax, and only ever so slightly, uh, it was only ever so slightly ahead. The reason why it came out on top was it had the multi um, wavelengths and it had a few other bells and whistles, such as the control panel and the timer built in. So now with this new Mito Pro uh, panel, you have the modular capability, you have the multi wavelengths, you have the inbuilt timer. So you can see why they're such, uh, such direct competitors, and from a visual point of view, they both have very similar designs, um, power, irradiance, and all that. Uh, this actually has 5 watt LEDs, but the Biomax have 3 watt LEDs, but they always, always test very, very powerful. Um, and price-wise, they're very evenly matched as well. So when you boil it down, you actually look at what are the key differences and what uh, may persuade you to go one way or the other. You have to look at, firstly, the wavelengths. So with the wavelengths, as we know, this Mito Pro panel has four wavelengths. Now the power is split evenly between those four wavelengths. So you've got 25% going to 630 or 645 as I tested, 25% going to 660, etc. Whereas the Platinum LED Biomax range, they use five wavelengths, right? So you might be thinking, oh great, that's better. But it's not necessarily the case because out of those five, five wavelengths, 80% of the power is still going to your 660 and 850. And only like, I think it's only 5% or maybe 10% is going to those smaller wavelengths like your 810 and stuff. So what that means is you're not getting a ton of power in those, those lesser known wavelengths. And also it means you're not getting the even spread of irradiance of light on the body. As we tested here with the hotspot, you get a nice blend. I, I wouldn't be surprised if this top panel, uh, top LED is 660 or 630, a 660, 
850, you know, just evenly spread. But if you've only got 5% or 10% of the light going to a particular wavelength, you, it might only be one in every 10 or one in every um, 20 even LEDs that are emitting that wavelength. So what that means is if you're standing in front of it, you might get some a concentration of 18 here and then all the way down here, but nothing in between. So that's the downside of that, um, the ratio, I guess, of, of that the Biomax uses. Of course, you're not getting that here, but you don't get all five wavelengths. So there's pros and cons to each, and I guess it really depends on what you want as a consumer and what you've researched as to the, what wavelengths that you, you prefer. But that is one of the key differences between the two panels. The other difference is the control panel. The new Biomax range have a nice touchscreen control panel and you can do some really cool things on it. Firstly, the control panel works really, really nice. It's simple to use, you know, just because it's touchscreen is not going to like confuse the elderly or, you know, if you're buying this for your grandparents, it's, it's, it's very easy of use, so that's great. But the main uh, draw card of this touch panel is you can customize how much power is going to um, red light or near infrared light using a slider uh, control mechanism, which works very simple. Personally though, I mean, 99% of the time I've used these panels, any red light therapy panel, I just have them on max power with both lights going. The only time I drop them down or um, turn one off or the other is for testing in these videos. So you could argue that, yeah, that's a real cool feature, but do you need it? I don't know. So I guess you'd have to say that the Platinum LED Biomax is the main competitor with the Mito Pro 1500, and if you're seriously considering this, you should seriously consider the Biomax, and vice versa. As for which one's better, uh, at this stage, I can't answer that. Uh, I will be comparing those panels, the Biomax 900 in particular, with the Mito Pro 1500. I'll hopefully do a direct head-to-head -head video, but I'll also be comparing them all in my upcoming 2021 uh, comparison series, so be sure to subscribe for that. Finally, we have the Juve. Juve, I always include Juve in these rival comparisons because, um, Juve is probably the biggest red light company out there at the time. So I always chuck them in, even though they might not be a direct competitor to this right now. Because the Juve Solo, which is their body panel, it's only half the size. I think it's, uh, you know, 150 LEDs. It only has two wavelengths, your 660 and your 850. But it does have some other cool features, such as uh, it's got a quite a unique design. It's got some nice hand grips on the back. It does have Bluetooth function. You can do a lot on your phone, though personally I don't use a lot of those functions. You can do some cool stuff with it. It does have um, ambient background mode. It does have the pulsing recovery mode where it pulses at the infrared light at 10 hertz and it's meant to help with recovery. So again, it's, it, you've got some interesting um, features in there that most of these other panels don't have. But the price is quite high and I haven't tested the power yet. So again, I will be including that Juve in the comparison series. So be sure to hang around for that. Um, but hey, it is the big player. It is probably the most popular and well-known red light therapy company. But really, if you're um, super serious about getting your best bang for your buck, it's going to be hard to beat this Mito Pro. Okay, so now let me run through what I do like about this panel and what I don't like about this panel. There's a lot, <clears throat> there is a lot going for this panel. I mean, to start with, it's the main thing is the value. It's probably, well, so far to date, it's the best valued red light therapy panel I've tested uh, from a power out point, um, point of view. And for that value, you're getting a well-designed uh, panel, you're getting three-year warranty, you're getting a nice control panel that works. Um, you get all the accessories you need, you get a manual, you get good support, three-year warranty. I mean, it, it is hard to beat. Sure, it doesn't have some of those really advanced features that, say, the Juve have or the pulsing feature that, like, light path LED have, but most people aren't interested in that. And that's why, you know, I think this continues to be one of the main uh, selling panels in the market, and I think it's going to do really well as I continue doing more, more reviews and comparisons going forward. Also, you've got the 60-day trial period where you can turn it back with no restocking fee. That's a great plus, and, and that may help a lot of consumers who are new to red light therapy. You know, it may help get them across the line because they know they can return the panel. Um, good EMF ratings, uh, but again, we are seeing that across the board now with most panels. So that used to be like a standout feature. Now it's kind of like an expectation. Um, still look good to know. Uh, you, like I said, you've got a good company that's been around for a few years now, good support, there's good information on their website, they've got a phone number you can call. Um, you get a decent, reliable design. You've got the four wavelengths evenly spread through here with even power going to all of them, which is another good plus. And yeah, good power. It's not necessarily the highest power 
panel I've tested, but it's still right up there. And uh, compared to panels from a few years ago, this is exceptionally high powered. Right. What about the dislikes? What What are the negatives with this panel? Well, firstly, as the premium lineup in the Mito Red range, it is lacking a few bells and whistles like the Pulsing technology, a more advanced control panel, um, Bluetooth and all that, if you're into that. Personally, I'm not, but you know, some people may be expecting those things from a top of the line premium panel. Um, the highest shipping cost for international customers may be a turn off for some, even though this is a good price panel. Uh, you know, when you get to the shipping screen and you see it's an extra $120 for shipping, whereas you can go to another company and pay $20 for shipping, which is crazy when you think about it. But you know, that may turn some people away. Still though, that low price point should negate any high shipping uh, costs. Some may be disappointed that it doesn't have the 810 nanometer wavelength. It has the 830 and the 850. You could also argue that the fact that they claim it's 630, but it, I tested 645, that's a bit of a negative because one, it means that their data is wrong. Assuming their data is wrong, or well, something's gone wrong there. And secondly, if you wanted it for 6:30, and now you find out that it's not 6:30, it's 6:40, that could be another turnoff. Finally, even though it does have excellent power and excellent value, some may find it a bit boring and bland. Like it's, there's nothing really amazing, you know, that sets it apart from the crowd. Yes, it's got good power, but it's not the best. Yes, it's got a nice, easy to use control panel, but it doesn't have like a touchscreen function. Um, yes, it's got four wavelengths, but it doesn't have you know, 810 or, you know what I mean? Like, you have to be really picky to um, see these things as negative, but I think some people may see these things as a negative. So some people may get caught up in these things. Um, but I guess Mito Red like, are positioning themselves as more of a lower cost, high value, you know, really good value company. They do the basics really, really well. Good support, good panels, good warranty, good power, easy to use, right? So for most people out there, that's all you need. Like that's that. I mean, it's red light. Like you stand in front of this panel a couple times a week, and you walk away feeling better from it. That that's really it, right? So, it's why I, I really like these panels. I mean, it's hard not to, right? And it's why it's hard not to recommend this to most users. I mean, sure, if you get a really technical, advanced biohacker and you want to play around with pulsing and noise frequencies, hey, you got the light path LED. But that's got some. Uh, light path LED panel, but that's got some downsides with all the complex controls and everything. So it's not really suitable for your, your grandparent, for instance. Or maybe you get caught up in all the marketing marketing hype and you want to have the panel that, you know, the NFL teams have. So you go to Juke, but you're spending big money for that privilege, right? Um, so yeah, I mean, it's overall, it's I, I like it. It's a good panel. And like I said before, I think it's going to do really, really well in my 2021 comparison series. And I think when I start publishing all this data over at alexfergus.com and my red light therapy buyers guide, you're going to see this panel, this particular panel right here, continue to be up there. It's just going to do well across the board. It is going to be exciting to do that direct uh, comparison with the Biomax 900 because that's, yeah, like I said, that is the big rival. Um, and I'm really looking forward to that. Otherwise, I think that's it. I've, I think I've tested everything I can and shared as much feedback as possible. Um, if there's anything I've missed or you want to know more about it, please leave a comment below. If you have enjoyed this video, give me a like, uh, give me a thumbs up and be sure to subscribe because I'm going to do more of them. Actually, on that note, I've done a couple of these deep reviews now and now they do drag on. I know, well, maybe drag's the wrong word. They do go on. I mean, they're 30 to 60 minutes long. I want to cover as much content as possible, as much testing and data points as possible. Uh, so I'm curious to know what your thoughts are. If you like these and you find them beneficial, I'll keep doing them. If you don't, if you think it's just too overboard and you just need to know the basics, then um, let me know about that as well. I do try and do a quick mini review uh, after I film these and just take the key points. So, you know, if you want to watch those for the other uh, panels that I've already can, uh, reviewed, you know, check them out. You don't have to invest hours upon hours watching these videos. But the main thing to keep an eye out for is going to be my comparison series where I compare all the panels, all the body panels on the market and test them and compare them against all these metrics. So that's going to be the main one if you are looking at buying one of these panels. In the meantime though, if you want to buy this, head over to mitoredlight.com, enter code AlexALEX, it will save you 5%. I do get a little bit of a commission based on that. Um, I get commissions on all red light therapy panels, so it's not like I pick favorites. Uh, but that does help me, you know, pay for the editing, pay for cameras, um, get, buy these panels when I need to, and, you know, continue putting that content like this. So I do appreciate it. Anyway, I'm going to sign off now. Uh, again, be sure to leave any comments, give me a thumbs up, and hit subscribe. I'll see you soon. Bye.